be wrong for them to do that. But if they said, look, you provoked us by dropping bombs on us, and then they came to drop bomb on you, then you can't say they're terrorists because now this is a more, much complicated thing. So in your example, what happened? Unless I know the reality, I can't tell you, but what I know from the realities on the ground now, what's happening with ISIS and America and other governments, what they're doing, you are opinionated already. But opinionated, you already have an opinion. But when Israel, the key word, when Israel is mentioned, you hide behind your face, your doors, your sleeves. When Israel is mentioned, oh, God Israel. It's like Israel, look, look. You, I'll tell you something. You will not be brave enough to condemn Israeli atrocities. What I said was, I don't understand the situation. No, no, look, I am making this assertion, like many people have seen. They are so afraid to even assert that Israelis are committing, Israelis, state are committing aggression and oppression against the Palestinians. They will not man up. They will not be brave enough, a, a decent human being, and to say, this is wrong. Why? Because several reasons. Whether you are already under their influence and control, who knows, or whether you are on their payroll, who knows, or whether you are already a Zionist in disguise. I haven't got a clue. I cannot make any generalization. The only thing that we can see is this, when aggression happens, it doesn't matter if the Muslims do it, if it's wrong, it's wrong. If the Muslims commit aggression and oppression and genocide and ethnic cleansing, it's wrong, wrong, wrong. But for people like yourself, my friend, you need to come also open. Look, just like you demand Muslims to condemn the bombings in Manchester, condemn the atrocities and terrorism that happened in 7-7 and 9-11, we demand from you. Likewise, wherever atrocities are committed by your governments, your people, your religion, man up to it, admit it, and say we condemn it to be wrong. Hmm? You were you stopped halfway through that sentence. What? When our government drops bombs and our government is the aggressor, then you paused. Because what? What do you actually want to say? Yeah, maybe he had to breathe. What do you actually want to say? Okay. If our government commits an act of aggression yes. on a sovereign country, yes. that is wrong. 100%. Do you, do you agree or disagree? Uh, as I said to you before, going back to there, I don't, know, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. Okay. I don't understand if Britain France. goes to France for no reason, no provocation from France, and tries to take over part of France, is that wrong or right? Uh, yeah, of course it's wrong. Of course it's wrong. That's what I'm asking you. Be like that. When Israel commits, when America commits this kind of aggression and oppression and injustice, you should say, wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah. Unless we have decent people like yourself, like this, the world, the, world, the world will not be a just and happy place. We need to come clean like this. We need to condemn our bad apples. You have bad apples, we have bad apples. And we need to condemn them, saying, no, these are wrong. The but are you doing this, is the question. My understanding is, whenever I see it, I don't understand all the complexities, why so I'm not giving an opinion. And that's right to me not to. But whenever I see if you brought someone else in here on a different point of view, they will then say, you're the aggressor. It just goes round. Round and round and round, and you shout at each other and you push each other, and it's futile. But I agree with you, you need to discuss it. All these people, are, whatever the fuck's going on out there, you need to discuss. No, you need to discuss. That. I don't understand. That. Okay, fair enough. I don't yeah. understand, so I'm not going to give an opinion. I'm not going to give an opinion. But I agree with yeah. your principle that if there is an unprovoked aggression that takes it, that's unacceptable. But I'm sure if you presented somebody here on the other side, he would make the claim that people don't go around. Uh, making aggressive attacks on provoke. They don't do that in civilized society. Do you know how many settlements are built in, in, in occupied Palestine? That's in a civilized society. In, in a civilized world, Palestine has been occupied by another country. It's faith. It's because of faith. Isn't it? Have you ever spoken about it? I Against it? I don't know anything about it. How about learning a bit more? I'm not, uh, another time. Another time. Oh. But I'm with you on that. Um, there's a, there's a few things that I did enjoy discussing. But to that embryology point, honestly, I whilst I will have a look into it, I think you should look into it as well. I said I have already. I can, if you give me newer references that I haven't looked at, I will look at it. But I'm saying you need to look at it, not look at the opponent, the critics who are now saying brushing aside embryology. Like I know a lot of people do that. An embryologist named us P. Z. Myers had a discussion with some Muslims some time ago and from this you have the atheist come coming in and says there you go Islam's embryology is debunked but if you were to analyze it and this was the point to discuss and bring about it 
you know, in, in, in real life, and look, look at the evidence. Is this plagiarism? Is this totally uh, scientific mistakes in the what the Quran says? If it's not, suppose not for the sake of argument. If the Quran has described something which the ancient hasn't described, the moderns only found out recently, and is accurate, then you should say, how did this desert living person 1,400 years ago know about these things? Out of many things. If I was able to deliver evidence to show it did exist, would you, would you then um, denounce Islam? Or would you question Islam? You see, would, you, would you still think it's what, what, what? One thing you need to understand. So if the Quran is saying, no one knew this before, and then you found someone near it, then you have already proven this statement wrong. The Quran doesn't say, no one knew this before. Quran is saying, look and ponder and reflect on, on how God created you in stages. This is how he'll resurrect you again. So, so I, thought, I thought you were saying it to me as if he had predicted it. But then no, it's saying, not about prediction. You're, you're Quran saying. is describing a process 1400 years ago. That description is something that for them was far, far in advance, even at that time. Well, that's, what I, that's what I doubt, you see. You, you doubt, so you need to check. And therefore, my question is, if, which is on the condition that I can prove to you, or somebody can prove to you, that actually what he said wasn't right, and it had been known 2,000 years before. No. If you can find, look, look, if no, you no, can no, find... No, that's the word if. if, right. if, if. So we're in the world of hypothetical. Suppose you found it. On the condition yeah. that. Suppose you found. What would you then do? Okay. Would you then Suppose you found something Quran describes, yeah. which is scientifically wrong, then you are, by all means, right to say this is scientific mistake in the Quran. What would you, what would you do then? No, 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 no. You, what I will do, I will look at. Look, what I will do, I will look at your evidence because this is what exactly I'm being doing. Okay, on the condition that again, no, 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 no. with these ones, I'll tell you. With these ones, with these ones like I've been doing for many, many years, I look at the evidence and I will then make a judgment, okay? Because so far, the cumulative evidence of history in my history that I have seen, people make claims, debunking claims, and I see all of them fall apart, all of them. See, my view is, even if I was able to produce something half credible, because you are told that the Quran is perfect, you refuse to accept it, notwithstanding the credibility of If you can prove the Quran, with absolute credibility it's wrong then you have proven it's wrong but what i am telling you this hypothetical example that you're giving is just a hope for you bring it on the table this is precisely the reason we come here in speakers corner elsewhere on the internet in our keyboards discuss this in this if you really have found that quran is totally wrong then you've made your case but why is it that people are failing why is it why is it people are failing to prove that point? When the Quran because is... Is there any point? No, no. Is there any point? When because the... you're told the no. script is perfect. No, Why no, would no, we no, try no. and prove no, it? No, no, no. You've been told it's perfect. What you need to understand is this Quran is saying, have you not considered the Quran with care? If it wasn't from God, then you will certainly find many discrepancies within it. So the Quran itself is giving a falsification test. It's amazingly, the Quran itself it's giving you a falsification test, just like any scientific um, um, uh, you know, hypothesis. If you can prove it wrong, then you're proving it wrong. Quran is saying, if this book wasn't from God, then you would find many discrepancies. So what we are asking is simply, you know, examine this book and say, where is the discrepancy? Where is this error? Where is this contradiction? People are doing this in the internet, you'll see, and you'll see the Muslim responses. If you go back and forth, back and forth, about debunking and rebuttal, debunking and rebuttal, you will see, I mean, with the old, if you, if you think mind? There's, a, there's an argument that because the language, I mean, I've never read the Quran, but he gave me a bit there. The language is suitably vague and suitably loose, but actually there are so many different interpretations of it. You will always be able to say, that's wrong. But then, when the Quran says God is one, you cannot twist it to say God is two in one or three in one. It's very clear because words, look, in a language, some words have a specific meaning. A son doesn't have a meaning of a daughter. Because that's the distinction we made already in our vocabulary. Likewise, in the Quran, there are many words which describes in such a way you cannot get a different interpretation. But there are many things, other things, which can be vague as the way things are described. For example, um, do you not ponder on the camel? For example. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Do they not look and ponder on how the camel is created? Right? Now, this statement, this statement, is not directing to anything specific about the camel. It's a very vague statement. And why so? Because if you were to study, I mean, I just give you an example of a camel. I can talk about bees so, or anything. So are you saying that, so what's the point on this? On this one, the Quran can give you statements which are very specific yeah. or statements which are open 
wording which is called, um, it can be explained in so many different ways. Okay. So for example, when this example is used for a camel, uh -huh. we see the camel itself has several features of its, the eyelids, of its hoof, uh, of its knees, of its fat clump. Everything is purposely designed to be a ship in a desert. Okay, not one thing. So we can then say, okay, actually, look, that's why the Quran doesn't say, oh, have you not seen the, the knee of a camel? It doesn't have to be that specific because a lot of this camel is very amazing. So when the Quran talks about specific things, about the human creation, okay, it's giving you specific details. So how can you go into this vagueness? You can only go as the words that allow. If the words allow ambiguity, then you have to say it's ambiguous. Right. The word camel is very specific because Look at the dictionary, what is a camel, you see a picture of it, see a photograph of it. It's not a donkey, it's not an elephant, it's yeah. a camel, it's very straightforward. So using specific language enables you therefore to give a very, very specific understanding. Of when however you want to read some words, you can read it again, that thing you read to me. Specific words. Specific words with specific meaning. And we can give you, because this has been discussed already, people have already demonstrated from ancient classical Arabic dictionaries. So it's not a new word meaning that has been invented today in 21st century. If I give you a dictionary, you know, 1,000 years old... Okay, go to that wording about, let's look up some of the words. Yeah, okay. Because you'll, you'll have words in there. I do a lot of crosswords. Campbell can only have one meaning. Whereas there'll be words in there. If you go to the dictionary or the source, it can have 30, 40, 50, 60 different meanings. Campbell has one meaning now. Exactly. Now. So, so if I give you if I give you the words of, of the meanings of the words Somebody's in, in, it into in, in, in embryology, but, but whatever I give you about embryology, the science of embryology, you would not know about it. But I still well, let's look at the word. The words I can tell you, the words I used, nutfa, nutfa became alaka, okay. alaka became mudra. Mudha then changed it to Idam. Idam was then clothed with Laham and then Khalqan Akha, another well, creation. So you had to go through that many different generations. No, to no, 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 no. Sorry. These are stages within the human development, oh, sorry, within no, the embryo. Okay. The first step is called the Nutfa. Nutfa is understood to, like, in, in, in the way the Arabs describe, like, if you have a, a bucket of water and you empty it, whatever amount of little drops that remains. Oh, is there a the, the whatever little drops that remains is the nutva. Okay. If you oh, have a dribbling of drop, yeah, drop, the concept of a drop. And we know scientifically that part, the first stage of human creation, this eye goat, is like a drop. Even look at it like a drop. Okay? And it's so minute. When the Quran says not from all, it says like the quintessence of this fluid the ejaculatory fluid that's emitted, that means only the quintessence, you know, a little part of it that's required for the human procreation. When is this translated? So when, when, did, when did that Arabic word, what was it for drop? What's the Arabic word for drop? I can give you a dictionary that no, mentioning no, no. this, you know, what, you know, a few hundred years ago. So when, when was it translated into English? Well, English or translation. The, the version you read in the, in the modern version? No, no. There's several, there's several lines. I mean, there's only one version, is there? No, no, translation. There are more than 30 or 40 English translations, probably more. But is the word, that word is the same in each of them? No, no, the word that are translated is translated like a sperm drop. My point is, when was that translated to mean the word drop? What was it? Was it 19th century, 18th century, 20th century? I, I don't know in English. My point um, being, that if it was translated 1400 years ago, yeah. and they chose the word drop... If it was, but if, if it, the meaning was given, 500 years ago, with the meaning of drop, yeah. then would you say this is a, a, a retrofit meaning or is it's it a meaning that is... It's a nice possibility. Yes, it's exactly. Possibility. So this is exactly what we're saying. The word alaqa in Arabic language dictionaries like Qabus al-Muhid, Lisan al-Arab, Saj al -Arus. I'm just giving you the names no, of the famous dictionaries. Okay, yeah. And they describe this, this is what it means. So they say that it means like a, an insect in the water that sucks blood. Okay? It's called a leech. This, in, in, in the ordinary language they use it for leech. The root word for this is something that is called something that is clinging. That's why my brother mentioned about clingingness early on. Because when we say we have relationship, because we cling to each other, in Arabic it's called alaqat, from alaqa, the word alaqa. Something that you hang, like a, 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 a lamp or something, is called mu'allaq, coming from alaq. So you can see the word is used within this original meaning of the word. So this leech is also clinging to the mother's, you know, um, uh, intra-involved to the placenta eventually to suck the nutrition okay 
And the other meaning is like a lich. It looks like a lich. This is the picture I was going to show you, but you know, you can you can see the day 18 to 20 day embryo. At day 22, the embryo looks like a lich. Medicinal lich we're talking about. If you open up the embryo, and if you open up the lich, or if you, if you look at the lich um, and open it up, you will see the the somites, you know, the structure and how they resemble each other. So internal and external, it looks like a lich. It functions like a lich as well. So as the leech hangs on your skin and sucks the blood, so does the human embryo. So the Quran is using a general term to describe a stage of a human development which are accurate in its morphology and function, description and function, and using a term which is not scientific. Like imagine the Quran says, oh, this is a morula. They will say, why is that, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, so no, the Quran is using in, words. We're using lost words. In semantics and word salad. Yeah. Here. So the Quran is using words. To prove the Quran to, to zygotes and embryos Sorry? and leeches. Sorry. You're getting lost. You, you started on a very clear point, and now we're what talking about some representation, some metaphorical representation. <laughs> Not metaphorical. Literal. You just said it was metaphorical. No. I am scientists. saying. I am saying. When the Quran uses the word, the embryo, one stage of the embryo looks like a leech. That's cool. I, it, I it does that. look like a leech and it functions like a leech. Okay, that's great. What I'm saying is, you've diverted from the original conversation. Which is what often happens, which was, you were talking about, it was his burden to prove that your book was true, completely true. Is that what we're discussing? Was, you asked me, that, that, you that, asked that's me. That's what it was um, when I came here. When you, and now we're perhaps, off, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps um, you came in uh, at the well, middle of a conversation. Why did you switch off? The friend just, here, the well, friend here, up, no, the know. friend here asked, let us look at the words. Why don't we, no, no. Just keep talking, did, talking, talking. Did you not oh, ask sound, me? Did you not ask me? Can you tell him? Did you not ask me what are the words used? He did. And that's why I'm 